We are here with Brandy Gomez, who is the Teacher of the Year for the River Delta Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Of course. Now, you are an English teacher at Rio Vista High School. Yes, I am. So tell us what, what uh, grade levels do you teach? I teach primarily 12th grade. I do have uh, one section of 11th grade. I have AP language right now. Um, I also teach an AVID class, AVID 12, and I'm the coordinator for that as well. Okay. I do want to talk about AVID later, but okay. let's talk about English first. Okay. What are students uh, reading these days? Uh, are you giving them a mixture of, of the classics and contemporary? I am definitely, uh, I think, constrained as far as what we have available inside of our library. Um, but I try to incorporate as many different types of texts as possible, incorporating some of the older literature as well as the newer. Um, I also try to make sure I incorporate literature from different cultures, um, different backgrounds, especially as the population changes to make sure that their culture is represented in the classroom as well. Um, for 12th grade English, I mean, we read everything from Hamlet. We also read 1984, especially because I feel like there are so many connections that we can discuss. We do a lot of the ERWC units as well to get some of the fiction and nonfiction integrated within there. Um, being, making sure to, um, I try to do some cross curricular uh, instruction with our government teacher when I'm doing 1984 so they can see how what they're learning in the literature applies to their modern day life as well. So when you're, when you're working on the older uh, literature, uh, there needs to be some interpretation. Absolutely. Is that uh, a struggle for students sometimes? Sometimes. I mean, we read just an excerpt from Beowulf, and Beowulf, I think, is a struggle for most people. Uh, of course, it is translated. It's not in the Old English, but we read it in class, break it down, talk about how it's put together, looking at main uh, ideas, looking at the main theme of the text as a whole, making some comparisons, looking at this idea or topic of the hero, and making comparisons of heroes in medieval time periods to modern day and kind of looking at, okay, what has changed? What's the same? What does this tell you about our culture? How does it represent our society? And a, and a good story is a good story and it'll last hundreds of years. Absolutely. So when they really kind of get past that point where they're not really interpreting and it's more intuitive, do you find them really getting into those those stories much more easily? Absolutely. Beowulf, when they first see it, they're like, oh, oh no, because just the format being in that epic poem, they struggle and look at it and kind of mm -hmm. feel daunted. But when we start reading it and I chunk up the text. I do a little bit at a time and we're like, okay, what's happening here? What is this talking about? And they realize this is the ultimate battle story. And uh, especially the males in my classroom start to get this connection like, oh yeah, this is great. He's awesome. And mm -hmm. they definitely create that connection. And then we start even connecting it to comic books and looking at the heroes that are represented there and then thinking about modern day. Who are our heroes? Are there any similarities as far as their characteristics? Hmm. Oh, great. So you, you also talked about Avid. Yes. Um, for those who don't know AVID, kind of quickly explain what it is. So AVID is, it stands for Advancement via Individual Determination. It's a class that's supporting our first generation, low income students that want to go to college, but need further support to get there. It could be anything from helping with the organization, uh, making sure they meet those A through G requirements, giving them help creating their personal insight questions, completing their applications, completing FAFSA, helping them find scholarships, making sure that they're getting all the support they need from their different classes, and if they're struggling with a class, helping them with that. It's fabulous. I've taught it uh, at second, since my second year of teaching, um, since 2006, and I have seen so much success with the program, and that's why I continue to teach it. I love teaching it, especially when I see a student who, at the beginning, doesn't think they're going to make their goal, but they are so determined and they push so hard. And at the end of the year, they go, Miss Gomez, look at all my acceptance letters. And we both cry together because we're overjoyed. It's great. Uh, it definitely works. And I am very happy to teach it. <laughs> because the, the uh, college acceptance rate and the college going rate is much higher for students involved in AVID. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, in our program alone, the majority of my seniors all get into four-year colleges. Some of them choose to go to the two-year college, but they do. I've had some. They've gone into the four-year, but they wanted for um, it could be money purposes or to stay closer to the family. They go to a two-year and then they transfer over. But the success level is definitely higher. And it's really teaching students how to study properly. Um, but it's it's more than that, right? I mean, there, there's so much more to it. Absolutely, it's making sure that they are college and career ready. It gives them the writing skills, it gives them the communication skills, 
We also do, in my 12th grade class, a project where they're looking at influential leaders and looking at how they can be an impact in their own community. So giving them a sense of agency in their own society, understanding how if they don't like something, they know how to change it. And there are avenues and ways to change it, and you don't just have to put up with something that you're unhappy with. Mm -hmm. And working with others, collaborating. And, and on the topic of, of collaboration, uh, we're seeing a, a big emphasis now on family and community engagement. And so with AVID, kids are strongly engaged, and then so that also hopefully draws in on the parents and the rest of the community. Absolutely. We, yeah. I do meetings continually throughout the year. Uh, even before we start the new school year, at the end of uh, each year, we have parents coming down from Riverview, which is our middle school, and we talk to them about the program, uh, talk about expectations of the program, support systems. Every year with my seniors, the beginning of the year, I have a parent night where I have all the parents come in. I just go over all the deadlines that they can expect, uh, what kind of support systems are in place at our school. We do FAFSA nights at our school with the help of our counselor where she brings in people from CalSOAPS and we actually help them fill out those FAFSA applications with the parents and the students. So they leave and they get everything done. Um, in the class in AVID, we do the college applications. We also are completing personal insight questions that I give them feedback. We also do writing workshops with them to make sure that when they submit them, they really are the best that they can be. Well, the college applications are very intimidating. It especially is. Especially for the first, <laughs> first time. Yes. Like if, if that child is the first one to go to college in the family, it's daunting. And especially trying to make sure you're hitting all those boxes that you have to make sure you include. Because um, if you don't, you may miss something and not realize that you're missing it. You know, just this idea of, okay, I have to take the test, but telling them they have to send the test scores. Um, a lot of students will forget that. They'll forget, oh wait, I have to send those too. And so making sure that they're checking all those boxes and that they get the help. And we take one step at a time. Because mm -hmm. if you look at the whole picture, as you mentioned, it's gonna be very daunting. <laughs> So how important is cultivating that relationship with the families? It's essential. You, we have to work together. Just like you teach our students to collaborate and to work together and the way you can be the best that you can be is by working together. Same thing when we work in the classroom is I need to work with those families. We need to work together to make sure they're getting support in all ways. And to also let the parents know, you know, if you're struggling in one area, we're here to help you. And we're going to do everything we can to make sure your, your child is successful and can go to college if that's their goal. You mentioned about support in all ways. And there's also a big emphasis now on social and emotional awareness mm -hmm. and wellness. Explain briefly, you know, what are the, some of the things you do to kind of check in with the kids, make sure everybody's OK? So we, um, our campus is actually, this is one of our primary focuses on the last couple of years, and our students are great because they noticed that a lot of our students are struggling with anxiety. I personally start, struggled with it as well. And so we check in with one another. We make sure that uh, if there's something you're struggling with, you can talk to me. We have a mental awareness center that has just been created in our library where if the kids are feeling overwhelmed, they can just go there to kind of, uh, relax, kind of debrief, talk to counselors, get the support that they need. But uh, I like to do a little poster and kind of check in, you know, they leave post-its saying, you know, how are you feeling today? And if I see a student struggling, um, they can write it on the back of the post-it note if they want to talk to me. I do a lot of journal writes kind of to debrief and I have some students that will talk to me that way. I don't like to point it out at all in class, of course, mm -hmm. but checking in with them before class, after class. I have students that come in at lunch many times just to come talk to me. Um, a lot of teachers were counselors as well <laughs> to help support them in every way. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean to you to be named as a Teacher of the Year? Um, I definitely, I feel very honored. Uh, it's not something I ever have, you know, strive to be. It's, my main goal is to support our students and to make sure that we're all working together. Um, I take this, this role seriously. I want to use it as a way to kind of help other teachers too, especially the newer teachers who I see struggling and trying to figure out who oh, this is so much and help them understand that, you know, even as teachers, we don't have all the answers and that's okay. We're gonna to work together because there's gonna be information you know that you can teach me and there's information I know that I can teach you and we're in this together because the ultimate goal is supporting those students. Well, congratulations to you. Thank you. It was nice talking to you. We were speaking with uh, Brandy Gomez, who is the Teacher of the Year for the River Delta Unified School District. Congratulations. Thank you so much.